let me ask you this. Can a beta become an alpha? Were you always an alpha male in your, you know, by your approximation or did you become uh, an alpha over time? And then can a beta become an alpha or do they just destined to die that way? Yeah. So um, I've identified four archetypes. There's the unplugged alpha, the uh, unplugged beta, and then there's a plugged in alpha and the plugged in beta. Um, I didn't really spend much time considering this, you know, in my past. It's just that through business, through dealing with my accountant, through dealing with my lawyers, through through going through entrepreneurs org and sitting in business forums, I was always a guy that they always referenced to as the man's man. They would say things like you're an alpha male, you don't put up with shit, garbage, whatever you want to call it. And I just never really thought much of it, right? But firstborns that um had kind of a difficult upbringing, which I did. Like my parents were strict. My dad was a Royal Air Force sergeant. Uh, there was no leeway with me, right? If if I didn't have the car back by 10 o'clock at 10.01, the car phone in my dad's Honda Accord was ringing. I don't know if you remember those old corded car phones from 1989, but it was ringing. It's like, why isn't my car home sort of thing, right? So, you know, when you grow up having a bit of a hard life with uh, strict boundaries, um, you set high standards for yourself. You want to do more. Um, you know, you want to please, you know, your parents. You want to you want to get stuff out of life sort of thing. And I've always said that, you know, uh, the world needs assholes, right? Like it's assholes that get get things done. I'm not saying assholes in the sense where, you know, you hurt people um, or that you intentionally go out of your way, but you don't give a lot of thought to pleasing or hurting people's feelings, which is a big thing, you know, in today's world. Like I know that you'll, you know, you've got the disclaimer at the start of the video, uh, you know, trying to be offended sort of thing. And I never really cared about offending people, but when I sort of went through this process of um, getting red pilled, you know, myself and un and unplugging from society's comforting lies, that's when I sort of came up with the notion of, okay, this book that I'm writing, which I ended up titling The Unplugged Alpha, that is the most appropriate title for it. Because when you consume this information and you adopt it and it becomes part of your life, it you know, becomes a fabric of the man that you are, you will become the unplugged alpha. Like you will become that guy. Um, so you can go from, you know, subscribing to comforting lies to unsubscribing from them and putting yourself first, developing a strong masculine frame, adopting a lot of the tenets that I talk about. Um, yeah, you can certainly become an unplugged alpha, but I think most guys struggle with it and they're probably not going to get there because the vast majority of guys I've noticed that watch my content and I start and I started doing this the other day on my podcast whenever I launch it is I now open with a disclaimer and I'll, and I'll tell people like, look, if you think the government loves you, if you think that women can never do no harm and that they're sugar and spice and all things nice, this podcast ain't going to be for you, right? Like I'm going to unplug you from these types of comforting lies sort of thing. So most people want to believe those comforting lies because it's easier than, you know, dealing with the truth. It's That's easier cool. to, you know, sleepwalk through life and just go back to sleep than it is dealing with the the discomforting reality of things. Until it's not, right? And yeah, so it's not easier. And that's really what I see because I have a lot of friends. I consider myself an alpha, although, you know, for the most part, I've always been in the driver's seat of my relationships, you know, which actually wasn't great because I was bored, <laughs> you know, um, which I think, you know, two people should be equals now. Uh, I mean, meaning like that one can't say goodbye a lot easier than the other because that's going to doom the relationship. But anyway, I see. Yeah, I would disagree with that. Yeah. Tell me about that. Let's talk about it. I don't think that men and women can be equals in a relationship. There's a reason why there's only one steering wheel and one set of pedals in my McLaren, because there's only one area of the car that's set for the driver. There's a passenger seat. The passenger seat has value as well. Um, I get involved in a lot of motorsports. I was just down in Baja, Mexico, doing some off-road racing um, and some challenge cars. And the navigator has very important roles, extra eyes set on the road. They keep a, they're on the radios, talking to their cars. They're looking at the navigation. So you want complementary phrases. You don't want people equal. I don't think men and women are equal. I think that men and women can complement each other once they identify that there's a masculine role and there's a feminine role. Yeah. And a good woman can complement a man's life right? If he sure. makes the right choice when it comes to, you know, choosing women. Yeah, I guess where I was going with that, because I believe, you know, what the Bible says that the man is the head of the household, you know, he needs to be the priest of his home. And he needs all, you know, if the decision ultimately comes down to, you know, if there's differing opinions, the man should make the decision. And I think that's what women want. They want to follow, they're going to try to lead. And if you let them, they'll resent you. I heard you talk about that 100% true. But I mean, I'm talking about emotionally, where I was always in relationships with women that I was a lot less emotionally invested than they were. 
which caused me, even though I, I called the shots and, mm. you know, there, I guess there was a certain level of security there. I was bored and I was always looking over my shoulder wondering if I could be happier with the next one. So now it's like, I want somebody that I, I'm as into them as they're into me, I guess is what I meant. Well, you want to, like, you want to choose women that choose you, right? <laughs> you never want to be in a scenario where you've got more interest or you've, or you've invested in that relationship more than she has. I mean, to try to look for parity there to say that, you know, like my desire is here and her desire is here. So it's exactly the same. I think you're going to have some difficulty, one, trying to evaluate that and two, maintain that. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, complexities that come around with that. So what I advise to guys is just make sure, and there's an entire chapter about in my book on it on number three, but make sure you deal with women that have genuine burning desire for you. Because if you don't, you could end up being her second choice. You know, to say that you've both got to have the same emotional investment, I think, I think leaves too many um, spots open. Like there's too many blind spots in it. Because mm -hmm. um, you're never going to have two people that have the same amount of desire in each other. And it changes over time. You know, it's going to increase for one person. It's maybe going to go down. It's going to increase. They might swap places sort of thing. Yeah. But I think that if you're a guy and you're going to choose a woman, if you want to invite a woman in your life, especially if you're talking about something like having kids, you know, getting in a scenario like that is very high risk and low reward for a lot of men in today's environment. And it's low risk, high reward for women naturally because they're hypergamous and they always almost always marry across and up on the social economic scale so for guys because i talk mostly to guys like 90 percent of my audience is guys um for men it's make sure that you choose women that choose you and that she's got genuine burning desire for you because the last thing you want to be i get a lot of these requests and consults from guys you don't want to be her second choice you don't want to be the guy that's 35 years old that wifed up the 32 year old professional with degrees on her walls um, she's a, a physician, a lawyer, an accountant, whatever like that, but she spent her twenties party and going to university, running through a lot of guys. And now she's ready to get right with God and settle down. Right. <clears throat> because she's going to generally pick the beta male. She's going to pick the guy that's good enough. He's hopefully just tall enough. He's got just good enough genes, but his future's bright. Cause he's got a good job. He's that engineer. He's got right. that STEM degree. He's making good money. So you definitely don't want to settle for a woman that only sees you as her second, third, fourth choice. You want to be her number one choice. And if you're not her number one choice, I advise guys to move on. Yeah, I think it's great advice, actually, what you're saying. And I, after I watched your video, I went up and I made this my, uh, TikTok reel mm -hmm. where I went up to a whiteboard. And I, you're probably familiar with this, but 80% of the women are sleeping with 20% of the men right now. Have you Correct. Heard this? Yeah. Right, okay. <clears throat> and I was like, you know, women say they don't, they don't want to be slut shame they don't want to hear that you know promiscuity is bad for them you know down the road or whatever but i'm like think about this 80 percent of the women are sleeping with 20 percent of the men what does that mean for the 80 percent of the men they're not sleeping with anybody or if they are it's the bottom 20 percent, right now that's going to create problems because the men they're, they're sleeping with the alphas I heard you talk about this they're sleeping with the strong rich whatever athletic men that are in the top 20 percent. but eventually they do they want to get married so now they're going to come down to the 80% and those 80% of guys haven't been getting laid for a long time. And right. they, and now they're, they're a little resentful because you want, you ran through all the, these guys up in the 20% and they were sleeping with four or five of you at the same time, or uh, they had to be just for the math to work. Mm -hmm. And now you don't want me to have feelings about that. I'm like, look, I'm not, I'm just the messenger. I'm not the one saying it, you know, it's right or wrong. I'm just saying, I can see that the writings on the wall and literally I was drawing it out that it's going to create problems for you. So it's like, I could totally see, you know, like how, you know, that, that 80%, like the, of those men that, uh, you know, betas, if you want to call them that, mm -hmm. um, they get, they get screwed over in the long run because they, the women that these 20% are sleeping with are some of the, their, their future wives, obviously they have to be. And they are, yep. this is what I, this is, I did this debate in LA, uh, mm -hmm. a couple months ago where I debated this woman that was, a had her doctorate in sex, something sexual studies or something. And she was a proponent of, <clears throat> of having sex before marriage and she debated me on on not nos debates this big youtube channel <clears throat> and i was just breaking it down i'm like look think about it like this if 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 i'm sleeping if i'm in that 20 percent and i'm sleeping with multiple women one of, they're not my best yes maybe one of them is my best yes but the others can't be my best yes and but they are someone else's best yes that's their that, that was their best yes because i think that's what everyone is really looking for is i want to say my best yes i want to get someone that i don't think i could have done any better with and that's the person that i you know ultimately want to be with now 
the only way for women to find out if they are really someone's best yes is to wait until marriage. Because if, it, if you are my best yes, you not having sex with me isn't going to scare me off. It will motivate me to man up and marry you, but it's not going to make me leave you because if you're my best yes, I want, I want it. I want the sex and I want everything that comes with it. Yeah, that's, that's a very difficult um, conversation, though, because, I mean, they've collected the data on this and it's it's very low, like the percentage of women today that are getting involved with a guy on a long term basis to raise a family uh, that were virgins. Yeah. it's 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 tiny percentage i think it's less than three percent whereas you know back in the 40s and 50s when they first started to collect the data it was much higher it was like well over 50 yeah. percent um so right. it's like you know for guys today you're going to really struggle to find a gal that hasn't been with guys before you um and i mean whether it's 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 two or it's 12 the data is pretty much the same like as soon as they're not a virgin um, the chances of them forming a long-term pair bond, having a healthy long-term relationship, not getting divorced, uh, not being depressed, uh, not going on meds and things like that. They all go up dramatically after a couple of guys. Mm -hmm. Um, so you've got a very, very small pool to deal with. So if you're a guy looking to find a gal that's like that, you need to be a super high value guy. Mm. Yeah. And I'm not saying virgin necessarily either, but I definitely hear what you're saying to I me. Mean, I, I guess, you know, if after a few guys, if the numbers play out to be the same, pretty much, then that, that's the ideal. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clips from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.